Hello and welcome to Fight News Now Extra. I'm John Pollock and we are coming off of UFC's Fight Night 32 card from Saturday night and that will be the major topic of discussion today with John Ramdean and Robin Black. But we also have unfortunate news about a December title fight in today's news. Vitor Belfort won his third straight fight on Saturday night in Goiânia in Brazil, stopping Dan Henderson at 117 of the opening round after Henderson was knocked down as he went to get back to his feet, ate a big left kick and, was, and the fight was stopped. Dana White noted after the show that barring anything crazy, Belfort will get the winner of Chris Weidman and Anderson Silva for the middleweight title in 2014. Brandon Thatch notched his second UFC win and 11th overall with a brutal stoppage of Paulo Thiago, dropping him with a knee and then Thiago submitted from the strikes by tapping the canvas with both hands at 210 of the opening round and continues a big wave of momentum that Thatch is riding within the welterweight division. And finally, a knee injury will prevent UFC lightweight champion Anthony Pettis from defending his title on December the 14th against Josh Defunk Thompson at the UFC on Fox 9 event in Sacramento, California. The announcement was made Sunday on Fox Sports Live that the November 30th flyweight title bout between Demetrius Johnson and Joseph Benavides will now be moved to the December 14th card. And Benavides now joins teammates Uriah Faber, Chad Mendes, and Danny Castillo on this card in Sacramento. And we are joined now by John Ramdean and Robin Black. And I have to say that when it comes to uh, 11 fight cards, uh, that was one of the quickest cards uh, the UFC has presented in a long time. Nine finishes of those 11 fights on, on Saturday night. And really, when we went into this, I mean, we talked about it. I mean, there, were, there wasn't a whole lot of implications for a lot of these fights, but there, it was a hell of a showcase for a lot of guys. And with Vitor Belfort, it solidifies that this guy will be fighting for the middleweight title next year. Yeah, Vitor Belfort just simply outstanding with that performance over Dan Henderson. The thing is, it's like, okay, it's all these what ifs now. What happens if Chris Weidman loses to Anderson Silva or beats Anderson Silva? Because if he loses to Anderson Silva, there's the third matchup. And then if he wins, well, there's so many other. I have. I really highly doubt that it will be Vitor Belfort taking on Chris Weidman. Uh, I don't know. I just. I think there's so many other matchups that are intriguing. There's the talk about the fight with uh, Leota Machida and Vitor Belfort. It's just so strange. The UFC has said this time and time again, and they very rarely do they follow through. I don't know if Vitor Belfort. Will be getting a title shot. Yeah, and I like the barring something crazy, but in fighting, everything everything's is crazy. crazy. Like every oh, this guy you know got hit by a car, and this weird thing happened, and that guy you can't get a license in uh, the state of California. There's always stuff. Vitor could fight Fabricio Verdum for an interim heavyweight title show with Cain Velasquez maybe on the show. Yeah, for exactly. A while. We could very well yeah, see that. Yeah, who knows? I'd watch it. Where do you guys fall? Because with Vitor Belfort, I mean, under regular circumstances, I think we would be looking at this like what a career renaissance this man has had. This is, he is, you know, this year would solidify him as easily one of the greatest fighters of all time. But there is that TRT issue that is always going to be prevalent, I think, amongst a lot of people who are asking, you know, why is he having this career renaissance and in such violent fashion as he has in 2013? Is it something that... I mean, to Vitor's defense here, he's not breaking yep. any yeah. rules You're that right. the UFC and these commissions have laid out for him. He is operating within the guidelines of what's allowable. And it will take a commission or a Nevada to say, listen, you popped positive in 2006. We're not going to license you for this. But as of right now, he hasn't broken a rule. But the problem is you, you look at some of the other fighters that would be considered one of the all-time greats over the sports history, well, it was the Wild West back then. We have no idea what guys were taking, what they were on. Uh, I'm, I mean, you just look at some of the, the, the fighters that are going down as some of the all-time well, greatest. It would certainly be naive to look at exactly. MMA's history and assume that what, there wasn't some chemical assistance along the way. But with Vitor Belfort, I mean, we know definitively this man not only was suspended in the past, but is now raising his levels and I mean there's been studies of people that when you are on steroids even getting off of it later it increases your muscle memory yeah. tremendously well that puts you over fighter Y who has been living a very clean career. There's talk even that higher testosterone changes your reaction time which would explain all those home runs in baseball too. It's a weird one man and it's a real unfortunate one but you know if your dad found himself you know struggling to kind of you know get uh, kind of go to bat at home with your mom 
actually, am I going there? That's not right. But, uh, you know, if you were having any kind of issues and you're a regular dude. But John's can, not going to be fighting yeah, dad. Yeah. And yeah. dad isn't going to be trying yeah. to knock his head off yeah, in front of 20, I know, people. I know. It's a weird one, man. And really, ultimately, there's other guys on TRT, but this guy just looks so juiced up. I mean, even if his uh, levels are normal, he looks like John Cena, you know? That is what throws people off, I really think. It's just how visually terrifying the guy looks. But now. at the same time, you look, go back and you look at, read anything about Vitor Belfort and his mental state going into fights, this guy was absolutely terrified st to step foot inside of the cage. So there's been times that some of his trainers, Mario Sperry being one of them, literally had to drag this guy into the back room to get him ready for his main event or his co-main event fight. And you can understand where a guy's like, wait a second, so this is going to help me out? Yeah. This is going to make me uh, less terrified well, that, of stepping yeah. in there and, I mean, and facing animals? When you see two gorillas and you, you, you test the level of the silverback, his testosterone is higher. It adds to your confidence. I mean, it does a lot. What he should do is go get Vada tested. He should get a giant, <laughs> what? seriously, get tested, show there's nothing else. Because people now start wondering, what else is the guy, you know? Get the full Vada I think it's because Vada he's testing. been silent as get, well. Yeah, get everything tested and come back and go, look, my, my hormone levels are the same as other men. I take this to be in that. Everything else is normal. My blood chemistry says I'm pretty much a normal guy. Get that done. Show that thing. Wave that flag around. And maybe we'll stop, you know... I don't know. It's a weird. It's a rough one for the UFC, man. Quickly, uh, some standout performances because we, we're short on time here. Obviously, Brandon Thatch, uh, a phenomenal uh, stoppage victory over Paulo Tiago, and he's going to get. You know, he is quickly uh, ascending that, that welterweight ladder at this point. Yeah, I mean, especially with the first round stoppages. The good thing about Brandon Thatch is the fact that quick turnover, get get the job done, get your next fight. This guy could essentially fight before the year's end if he really wanted to. Came out of that fight a little bit of a hematoma there on the left side of his head, but the fact is, I think he'll be okay and I wouldn't be surprised if he's fighting in the next couple of months. Yeah, that's uh, he's a badass. I really like Jeremy Stevens, man. That was a beautiful, beautiful setup. Yeah, there was some tremendous finishes on that card on Saturday night, and we didn't even get to chat about the lightweight title change. We'll get to that later this week. But right now, we have more of Fight News Now Extra.